Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Cormac Tor. I'm a re assistant research professor at Duke University at the Center for Autonomous Materials Design. So welcome everybody to this um, A-Flow workshop that's being hosted by the Texas A&M University. Uh, so to start off, I'll just introduce ourselves. So my name, I already mentioned my name. So the other uh, workshop, the other people who will be teaching this workshop include uh, Dr. Corey Osis, Dr. David Hicks, Dr. Marco Westers, and Dr. Andres Smolyanyuk, who are all uh, postdoctoral associates in the Center for Autonomous Materials Design at Duke University. And the director of our center is uh, Professor Stefano Carterolo. So just to give you a brief, uh, just to briefly go through some logistics. So we'll be hosting this on Zoom. So I'm guessing everybody is reasonably familiar with Zoom at the, at, at, by this point, but I'll just give, point out a couple of key features. So first of all, everybody, your microphone should be muted if you're not speaking. This is to avoid issues like feedback or background noise. Um, if you do have a question, and please feel free during at the individual sessions to, in, to interrupt us and ask questions. You can use either the chat function, so you put a message in the chat and we'll be watching for that, or you can also um, raise your hand. So to raise, use raise hand function, so in the most recent version of Zoom, this is now in this reactions button. So if you hit this reactions button, you'll see this raise hand option. And then if you click on this button, you can raise your hand and then you'll see your hand raised next to your name in the participants list. Okay, so then we'll have exercises as part of each session. For these exercises, the groups will be separated into breakout rooms. So you'll get a message that to go to a certain breakout room. And there'll be one of our instructors in each breakout room. So you can just ask the instructor to do for questions, you can share your screen with them, et cetera. So you can kind of solve any problems you're having with the exercises. And then specific exercise materials are available in this TAMU open on demand portal. So for you have ones for AFLOW underscore day one, AFLOW underscore day two, day three, and day four. And to find this uh, TAMU on the demand portal, you should have gotten an email already, but you also have, can follow this link to sites.google.com slash tamu.edu slash AFLOW. And now we'll just show you how to actually log in. So if you go to, if you actually log in, you'll see this, um, you should have gotten a username and password. So if you click on this link, username and password, you can go in, you can open up through this video. If you go to interactive apps, you go to the visit video desktop, you launch this video desktop, then this will give you some options. So here you have to, you already click on this button here to launch it or this button down here. Then you can go inside, you can set the number of hours. So we recommend about 12, so leave it at the default because you, you want to have the same desktop open all day. And then we suggest about four, four cores. So usually the defaults are fine for this. Then at the end, you can, you can then launch the busy desktop. It'll usually take a few minutes. For, it'll be waiting in the queue for it to launch. Then once, after a while, this, you get this screen. So you have some time remaining, then you have an option, you have a view only link. So this allows you to share your video desktop with the instructors if you're having a problem, or and then you can click on this link to actually launch it and start it. Okay, so once you launch it, you'll get a screen like this. If you want to open a terminal, you go to this applications button, system tools, and then launch it, then you can start the terminal. So this allows you to start the terminal here. So then we recommend that you do module load AFLOW. So this loads the AFLOW code and you go to CD desktop and AFLOW underscore day one to open up that day's, uh, to get to that day's exercise materials. Then to do copy and paste, it's a bit complicated. It is a bit, a bit more tricky. So if you open here on the left-hand side, you'll see this arrow. If you open this clipboard, you can, then you can use this to copy paste. So what you'll get is an option. So a screen that looks like this. And if you click on the script clipboard down here, you'll get this clipboard. So if you want to copy and paste something from outside the video terminal into the video terminal. So if you have something like, you might have something that you look up online, then you want to copy paste it into a file. You, bet you can copy paste into the terminal and then inside into this clipboard. And then from the clipboard, you can copy paste into your text editor inside this uh, video terminal. Okay, so I'll just 
show you briefly on my screen. I think I took out of this. Um, so here's the sites.google.com, tamu.edu slash aflow. So if you click on this link here, this will open up your video terminal. Then you'll get a, you'll be prompted for your username and password. You go inside to my interactive sessions. Again, you go here, interactive apps, launch the busy desktop. Then you come down here, you launch the desktop and you go through various other things to launch it. And then you get into your terminal, it should be here. So let me close this for now. So to open the clipboard, you go here, click on this clipboard and it opens it up like this. You also go to applications, system tools. Applications, system tools, terminal. Then you do module load A flow. Switch to the thing on the desk. You type uh, desktop. And then you have day one. You can also find it here directly on the desktop. It's under day one. So you can see here's the introduction. So it's just a copy of today's slides. But for later ones, you'll see that you actually have um, exercise materials inside. Okay. Just let me go back to PowerPoint. Okay. So then to motivate why we're actually interested in doing this kind of materials design. The reason is, is because we want to look for materials, novel materials for specific engineering type applications. So here's some examples. So here's um, <clears throat> one example of the kind of materials that we look for is our thermal barrier coatings for energy or aerospace applications. So we, for example, if you want to coat a turbine blade with a thermal and environmental barrier, so something that's going to have low thermal conductivity to protect the turbine blade, but it's also going to be resistant to things like corrosion gases, so to, the, to um, corrosion from the combustion products, as well as from high temperatures, temp high, oxygen at high temperatures. Other examples will be super hard wear resistant coatings for things like machine tools, drill bits, and so on. Another example will be uh, biocompatible bio corrosion resistant alloys for things like bone screws, hip replacements, and so on. So for biomedical implants. We want to look for um, energy materials, so things like photovoltaic materials for solar energy harvesting, solid state electrolytes for lithium ion batteries. We also want to look at things like advanced electronics, so things like maybe you want to look at superconducting materials or you want to find heat sinks for advanced electronics and so on. Okay, so then to give you an idea of the kind of search space that we're looking at for these materials, so here's a periodic table. If we look at all the elements that are not noble gases that have um, and if you just look at pairs of element combinations, so all the elements up to bismuth, so these are all the non-radioactive uh, elements that actually form compounds. You have, if you look at, start looking at pairs of these elements, if you just look at, just, so just for simple pairs, not, not taking into account the different structures or stoichiometric ratios, but just for pairs of elements, you have, so you have 78 of these elements, you can form 3,000 pairs, 76,000 three uh, element combinations, over 1 million four element combinations, 20 million five element com combinations, and up to si a quarter of a billion six element combinations. Then on top of this, as well as just having different element combinations, we also have different possible structures. That's so what we call structural prototypes. And David will be talking a bit more about this later on, maybe tomorrow. So that increases. So but so you, you will literally get into billions of the different types of materials by the time you get up to five or six element combinations. Billions of, of, yeah, of potential materials. So here we have something like 10 to the power of 177. If we look at all the different prototypes that we've identified, we look at all the possible different decorations, you can have something like 10 to the power of 177 different unique materials. So, to, so in order to, to explore this by hand would be pretty much impossible. So that's why we do automated computational materials discovery. And this is really where AFLOW comes in. So again, we start from either experimentally observed structures that we just want to calculate additional properties for, or we look at these what we call these structural prototypes. 
which are sort of the backbone structures for different materials. And David is going to be talking more about this in detail tomorrow. We perform automated quantum mechanics calculations for these materials. We start from where we do um, density functional theory calculations. So in this case, we'll be using the VASP, so this Vienna ab initio simulation package. We pipe the results of these quantum mechanics calculation into a searchable or sortable database. Uh, so in our case, this is at aflow.org. And then finally, we, we interrogate this database either to find candidate materials for specific applications or to do things like training machine learning models to identify specific general trends and design rules. So the way AFLOW works is it wraps around the density functional theory code. So if you're from a single input file and you learn how to generate this, these files during this workshop. So from the single AFLOW.in file, you can set up multiple different DFT calculations. AFLOW will then monitor these DFT calculations. If it finds an error, it will restart the calculation. So we'll change some parameters in order to fix this error, restart the calculation, and then keep doing this until the calculation actually finishes successfully. Then at the end, we analyze these DFT calculations. We parse the output files and extract information like electronic properties. So we extract the electronic band gap. We, we plot the densities, electronic density of states. We can also combine multiple DFT calculations to get things like thermal and elastic properties. And we'll be going through how to do all of these things during this workshop. Then it finally pipes these results into the online database for online storage and dissemination. And again, Marco Resters tomorrow will be talking about this, how you actually can access and download data from this database, both, pro, both using the web portal, but also programmatically using this AFLUX search API. Okay, okay. so here's the main AFLUX search page. So it's available at aflux.org. So this is the main page for the web portal. You can see we have several different things on this page. So if you look at the total number of properties, we have about 3.5 million materials entries right now, and a total of 700 million different properties in, in total for all these different materials. You can see here a breakdown of the properties, so how many band structures we have, how many materials are elastic or thermal properties, and so on. We also have this, we've also another thing we've recently set up. So we have these April schools, which are attending now. We now also have this AFLOW seminar series. So these are a series of online seminars. So you can anybody can sign up. So here's the sign up link. So you can either go through it through the you can either access page, this page, either from the link on the main AFLOW page, or you can go directly to aflow.org slash seminars. So here's the next talk. So I did, these talks occur every two weeks on Thursday afternoons, usually at 3 p.m. Eastern time. The next talk will be on July 22nd. That's by Professor Ismail Adabu from the Pennsylvania State University. So if you are interested in attending these talks, please feel free to sign up and you'll get an email with the, with the Zoom link so that you can attend. Okay, so then if we go further down on the aflow.org page, we see this, what we call these apps and docs. So various of these uh, different applications will be going through during the different sessions during this workshop. But now I'm just gonna briefly introduce this, uh, what we call this Mendelib search, so this advanced search page. So here we have different, um, so this, if you click on this that button, you get this page, which is the search page. So you can see you have this uh, periodic table of the elements. So you can select different elements, individual elements. You can also select groups of elements. You can think, look for things like um, alkali metals and halogens. You can also set the number of species. So this is important because if you don't set the number of species, it will give you everything that contains the elements you selected but also everything, that, but this is like just, a, a, it contains these, but it could also contain other elements as well. So if you specifically want, let's say, just alkali halides, binary alkali halide, halides, so that you should, 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 should select alkali metals, halogens, and set number of species to two, and then this will search only for these alkali halides. Then you can also perform different logic operations, so and, or, not. So if you want to have something that do, includes one element, but not does not include an element, other element, you can also then create these types of search queries. You can also then yeah, do different look, look um, search filter by properties of the materials as well. So you can either do this slide or you can just hit this display button so to bring both property filters onto the main page. So here, for example, so then if we do 
change the space so it also includes the property filters. At the bottom, you'll see these options. So space group and Pearson symbol are usually just all of those displayed by default. But then you can select other things like electronic properties for the band gap, mechanical properties, thermodynamic properties, and so on. Okay, so here I'll work through an example. Here I've selected sodium and chlorine. I've set the number of elements that I want to be two. And then I want to click this filter here to add the electronic band gap. And then I can do a search. So I've got this. And then if I want to restrict the results to a certain range, I can also hit this restrict value button and go from say one to three electron volts or something like this. Okay. So before we do the exercise, I'm just going to run through this example on the web page. Okay. Okay, so here's the AFLOW homepage. So here we can go to the AFLOW schools and seminars that I showed you about earlier. And you can sign up for the individual seminars and you, you scroll down, you can see the more upcoming, future upcoming seminars for the next month or so. So again, we have one in Berkeley every two weeks on Thursday afternoons, usually on Thursday afternoons, except though this one in about a month's time, it's going to be in the morning. Okay. If we scroll down, we can see our apps and dots. We can go to our, this advanced search, to the search page. We want to click on sodium, chlorine, number of species is two. We click on this display filter, we bring up the um, property filters, we add the electronic band gap, and here we're going to restrict the values from let's say one to let's say 10 electron volts, otherwise we won't get anything. Then we do a search, and then you can see all the different sodium chlorides that are listed. So you can see most of these are just the um, 225 space group. So this is just a rock salt structure, as you would expect. So then you have, except, okay, here you can see you have a different, this is a simple cubic one down here. Not even a simple cubic one here. So as I mentioned before, we're gonna do breakout rooms for the exercises. So we're gonna start off with some simple exercise just to get people warmed up. Um, so here is the two exercises, just using this advanced, so using the search page on the aflow.org website. So the first one is to use the um, search functionality to find the band gap for silicon carbide in the zinc blend structure which is space group number 216. The second one is to use the search functionality to find materials containing tin, but not lead, with band gaps between one of the and three electron volts in this ICSD catalog of this ATOS database. And I see how many results are, turned, are returned. So if we want to break up into, our, into the breakout rooms now, and we can start working through this exercise. Okay, let me stop here. Can we go ahead and assign the breakout rooms real quick? Um, we are five instructors, so we have five breakout rooms. Okay, it looks like people are now coming back from the breakout rooms.
Okay. So there's a question in the chat. What's the difference between the 10 entries with a 1.37 electron volt band gap return from exercise one? So before I answer this question, we're just gonna go through the exercises and pull them up and then we can have a quick look and see if there is actually, sometimes the entrant is it's in the ICSD, sometimes the ICSD contains duplicate entry and entries. So they literally might be the same material. So for example, you might have somebody who did a study of the lattice constant as a function of temperature and they reported the, the, the so they reported this structure that's basically the same structure, but as a function of different temperatures, when we do the relaxation, they all end up relaxing to the same size at zero temperature. So it ends up being the same material. And there's quite a lot of duplicates in the ICSD. And this is one of the things David will be talking about later on tomorrow is how to actually, you, you can use AFLOW to identify duplicates structures. Yeah, so like a, they were started off from having slightly different lattice constants or maybe quite large differences in lattice constants. So they will relax just because of um, numerical errors. They won't always relax to exactly the same value. But let me just start, okay, let me pull up, let me share my screen and then start going through these exercises. Okay. So, okay, here's the exercises again. So exercise use the advanced search functionality to find the band gap for silicon carbide in the zinc blend structure, space group 216. Okay, so we go to the search page. We look for silicon, okay, let's clear this. We want silicon, carbon, number of species is two, so that's correct still. We have the band gap selected. So here we don't want to restrict the value, but we do want to restrict the space group. So we look 216. 216. And then we hit search. I think you cleared it out. Yeah, let me try again. Band gap, space group. Six. 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 Okay, now the search is wrong. Okay, so here we can see we have 10 different entries and they're pretty much all of the same band gap. So you can see the band gap here is 1.37 electron volts, at least according to DFT. We want to take a look at one of the entries. We just click on it and this will bring up the entry page and we can get more information. So here you can see things like the lattice constant and so on. So then you can go in, you can compare them. In this case, most of these materials should be pretty much identical. So there's, you can see that within the ICSD, there's actually quite a lot of duplicate materials, duplicate, but are effectively duplicate entries. So the same people have reported the crystal, the crystal structure of the same material on multiple occasions. Now the ICSD, they do try to, um, prune these entries when they have multiple copies. That's why you have to be a bit careful with the ICSD, especially if you're reporting an ICSD number, because sometimes they do actually delete entries. It's one of the things we, we have found. Okay, so then if we look at the next one, we want to use the advanced search functionality to find materials containing tin, but not lead, with band gaps between one and three electron volts in the ICSD catalog, and how many entries are returned. So again, if we clear this, in this case, we don't want to set a specific number of species. So let's go leave this blank. Then we select tin and lead. We don't want to restrict the space group, but we do want to restrict this value be from one to three electron volts. And now we're looking at ICSD only. So that's correct. So let's hit search. Whoa, okay, I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, ah, it should be tin and not lead. Okay, tin but not lead. Let's do that search again. 
So you can see here, if you hit this not button, it'll bring up this exclamation mark, which is effectively the not in our Aflux syntax. And you can see now it returns 369 entries. And so you can see it contains ternaries, quaternaries, and so on. So you, you get a lot of different types of entries with multiple different species. And this is why you usually, if you want to search for a specific compound, you have to use this number of species button. Okay. So that's the exercises. So now we have this database. What are the kind of things we, we look for? Well, a lot of these materials that we generate are hypothetical materials. So they're generated by decorating these different types of crystal structures that we have here with different elements. So we don't actually know if these, whether these materials are going to exist or not. So the first thing we do is look at whether or not they're going to be thermodynamically stable. And this uses this convex hull analysis, which Dr. Coriosis will talk to you about on, I think on Wednesday. He'll go through this in more detail. You can also look for things like mechanical stability. So for here, for here, for example, we calculated the phonon dispersion. In this case, this is the hexagonal uh, allotrope of titanium. You can see that it has uh, no, all, all of these phonon frequencies are real. There's no imaginary frequencies. This indicates that it's mechanically stable at zero temperature. Whereas if we look at the BCC phase, we can see here that um, you have these, well, you, you see on this plot, these plotted are, are plotted as negative. This means that this is a way of representing imaginary frequencies. And this means essentially that the material is mechanically unstable. So you have certain deformations. If the atom goes in that way, it'll actually keep accelerating and not, and the material will, is expect, will spontaneously deform. So at zero temperature, the BCC phase is unstable. This is the high temperature phase. So it will in turn into instead into this hexagonal phase. Okay, you're now, so that's whether, how you determine whether materials will actually form. Then once they, you try to write out which ones will form, you also want to look at uh, properties. So the same kind of things, if you have a large database of materials, you can do things like design rule discovery. So here's an example for superconducting critical temperature. On the left, what we, so for example, for these two structures, if you put lead on this site, the critical temperature will increase. Whereas you put neodymium, the critical temperature will reduce. There's another example for thermal conductivity in perovskites. So in the case here of fluoride perovskites, the thermal conductivity depends on what atom is on the B site. Whereas in these oxide perovskites, it will depend most strongly on what atom is on the A site. So you've got these different sites, you've got A, B, and then you've got these anion sites, which are either oxygen or fluorine. So in the case of the oxides, it's going to depend on the, what's, what, what elements on the A site, whereas in the Fluorides is going to depend on what's on the B side. You can also then train, use the data to train machine learning models. So they actually give quantitative predictions for things like electronic properties, thermal and thermal mechanical properties. And I'm going to be talking about this a bit more on Wednesday. So the A-flow code itself, you can download it and install it on your own machine. So whether on a laptop or on a cluster, um, you can be used on Linux, Mac, and Windows. So for Windows, you require some additional software. So some- I gotta move, I gotta move on there. Sorry? Yeah. Can you mute your microphone, please? Thank you. So Windows requires some additional software. You can either have a Windows subsystem or SIGWIN for other Windows versions. And for instructions and installation scripts, you can visit aflow.org slash install dash aflow. Okay. And then with that, I'll just wrap up and I'll just, talk about who's going to be talking next. So next session, so before lunch and after lunch will be with Dr. Coriosis. And he's going to give an introduction to DFT and BASP. So how to use BASP info files, energy calculations and look for K-point convergence, primitive con conventional cell reputations, spin polarized calculations, and density of states and band structure calculations. Then da Dr. David Hicks after that. So this, this evening, in the last session today, We'll talk about DFT plus A flow. So, how to actually run these same types of DFT calculations, but using A flow to do this automatically. Then, tomorrow, uh, David will be talking again about A. We'll talking again, and this time he'll be first thing he'll be talking about is the symmetry. So, this A flow sim module to, to um, determine the symmetry of different crystal structures. And then, afterwards, he's going to talk about crystal structure prototyping. 
So how to actually how we use these backbone structures, how we discover them, how the, the encyclopedia we have, and how you can use them to generate new hypothetical materials. And then finally, we're going to talk about the then to, final session tomorrow will be done by Dr. Marco Westers, who's going to talk about the AFLIP.org database and the AFLIP and the APIs. So how you can actually use the APIs to download information from the AFLIP database. Then on Wednesday in the morning, I'll be talking about elastic and thermal properties, how we calculate these with A-flow. Then Corey will be talking about thermodynamic stability, determining it, basically how to determine if a structure is stable or not using this A-flow convex hull module. And you also talk about the this CCE, this coordination corrected entropies, to correct the formation entropies of ionic materials. Then the other two sessions, I'll be talking about this machine learning, in particular this PLMF, uh, machine learning model and the AFL ML API. And then the final session on Wednesday, Dave will be talking about AFL Excel Finder. So this is how you do the structure comparison. You determine how, whether or not a structure is, two structures are identical, whether or not structures are unique. So if you have a set of a large set of structures, how would you find how to determine which ones are the unique ones and which ones are duplicates? Then on the last day, on Thursday, Marco Esters will be talking about phonons and harmonic approximation, so about this AFLOW APL module. Then Dr. Andriy Smolyanyuk will talk about the quasi-harmonic approximation. Again, so this is basically an extension to AFLOW APL, where you do the quasi, instead of just doing harmonic approximation, you do the quasi-harmonic approximation. And then finally, on Thursday, Corey will talk about how we do model disorder with AFLOW, so this AFLOW partial occupation algorithm. Okay, so that's the schedule for the next four days. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And if anybody has any other questions before we go for a break, please let me know. Otherwise, we can start taking a break and we will reconvene at 11 a.m. Uh, Central Time. <laughs>